Hello, I'm Kyungbuk Shin from Hanmam Church in Chuncheon. I suffered from social anxiety disorder and I couldn't even make eye contact with other people. But I was set free from my disorder after I met the risen Jesus. I'd like to share my story with you. I was diagnosed with social anxiety disorder in high school. Social anxiety disorder is an abnormally intense fear of being humiliated and embarrassed in social situations. I began showing signs of social anxiety when I was a child. My parents say that I was extremely shy when I was a baby. At restaurants, I'd hide under the table and from there I'd receive food as if I were a puppy. In winter, when I got on the bus, my mother had to cover me completely while she was carrying me. When I was on my mother's back, covered by a big down jacket, She'd uncover me a bit in case I was too warm. But then I'd start crying, and it was embarrassingly loud and vicious. Another time, as an errand, I went to my neighbor's house. When I got there, I was afraid of what would happen if I pressed the doorbell. So instead, I sat on their doorstep for a while, and then returned home. As I got older, the anxiety didn't go away. I suffered even more from it as I began my life in school. I couldn't adjust to crowds. My mind would wander or go blank, or I'd think about other things. I wanted to live like other normal kids, so I tried everything I could. But all kinds of situations made me afraid, and I felt like I wanted to hide under a rock. At the time, I had to take the bus to school. What tortured me on the bus was facing other people. You had to climb three steps to get on the bus. During the time I was climbing the steps, I felt burdened by the bus driver's eyes on me. So I'd pay while avoiding eye contact with him and race to find a seat. Even after I found a seat, I was afraid to make eye contact with people around me. So I'd pretend to sleep or look out the window. Between my house and the school, there were 13 bus stops. That period was pure torture for me. In class, I kept my eyes on the desk because I couldn't look at the teacher. Even though I was paying attention, since my eyes were always on the desk, the teacher thought I was weird. Sometimes, the teacher would call on us, and I was always nervous that it would be my turn. Even if I didn't know the answer, I'd just quickly say anything so that the attention would turn away from me. I avoided everything that would attract attention to me. It made me more expressionless and less responsive. When walking in the school corridors, I kept hearing things like, He's weird. As these thoughts became worse, I felt like I was going crazy. As my stress piled up, I couldn't study or concentrate in class. Then one day, the stress reached its limit. While walking down the street, without any thought, I picked up a stone and put it in my mouth for 24 hours. I lived with a rock in my mouth for one month. I did this to help myself endure the severe stress. While eating at school and even while sleeping, I kept the stone in my mouth. A few times while I was sleeping, I choked on the stone and nearly died. In the end, my parents found out about it. They were really shocked and took me to the hospital, and I had my stomach examined. Fortunately, there are no problems, but I wasn't allowed to bite on stones anymore. I got myself into odd and awkward situations daily, which drained me emotionally. Outwardly, I was a normal student, but inside I was withering up. Within the crowds at school, I had to endure pressure and fear every day. While going to school, in class, or in line for lunch, all the social situations I had to face were like hell to me. Looking at myself in the mirror, I even thought about gouging my eyes out. If I didn't have them, I wouldn't have to meet other people's eyes. I've even stared at the sun many times when it was high in the sky, trying to blind myself. One day, I couldn't bear this problem anymore, so I told my family, Take me to a mental hospital. If you don't, 
I don't know what I'll do next. I don't know what my problem is, but I can't live like this anymore. You don't understand how horribly I suffer at school. It was very painful to do so, but I persuaded them. That was how I began psychiatric treatment. First, my brain was examined. The results were completely abnormal. The doctor said it was due to extreme stress. I was put on respiratory therapy, medication, and a program which analyzed my past in order to correct my way of thinking. This is an example of how that program worked. The doctor would give each of my worries strange names. One would be called the prophecy of a fortune teller. The other worry would be called the end of the world. I felt like this unusual program could make things better, but learning different names for all my worries just made my thoughts more complicated. In the end, this treatment wasn't able to solve my problem either. After that, I stopped getting mental treatment. In the hospital, I had met many patients like me, and they had all looked like normal people. So I thought, I see. They've been hiding their problems, but they're lost, just like me. After stopping treatment, my headaches got worse. When I thought about living like this for the rest of my life, I felt hopeless. I searched the internet about social anxiety. When I read about it, it said the first thing you had to do was to face people. But I no longer wanted to keep facing those who induced my fears to come back. It seemed better to live in a solitary place, like a Buddhist temple. It felt like nothing could be done. During this time, I lived like a lost person. I spent the time thinking that there must be a supreme being somewhere who knew and saw everything. And I pondered again and again about that supreme being. Then one day, by chance, I met my father again. He hadn't been living with us. My parents had fought a lot and had ended up hating each other and getting a divorce. I hadn't seen my father in ages, but out of the blue, he asked me to go to his church. At the time, I was thinking about becoming independent, so I'd been planning to move out. So when my father told me that his church had dormitories for students, I ended up living in the dormitories run by Hanmam Church. I had heard from my father that it was a place for Christian training. I thought he meant physical training, so I arrived very nervous. <laughs> Predictably, there were dogs and a parking lot without painted lines. When I saw the white warehouse building, it looked like a real training center. <laughs> tried to prepare myself mentally by saying, I'm sure I'll learn something here. I soon found out that the white warehouse was the church building. <laughs> out of the three warehouse-like buildings, I was assigned to the furthest one. As I was walking in, I was surprised by how crowded it was. And I was especially surprised to see so many young people. It looked suspicious, but I went inside anyway. In the church, I carefully observed the people. They were sitting in the pews packed closely together. I thought, if I start a church life, there really will be no way to avoid people. <laughs> but I saw how glad the people were to be together and how joyful they talked. I thought their bright eyes and voices seemed so beautiful. The sight moved me and I began to let my guard down. Christian training wasn't physical after all. It was attending morning prayer and then having breakfast together at 7 a.m. I thought eating in a packed space was going to be hard for me. But as we joyfully talked about Jesus and happy things, I became less nervous and afraid. In the past, I avoided people, thinking that they would be disgusted by me. But this community accepted me so warmly without prejudice or judgment. And in this way, I received much love from their church community. At first, I couldn't listen to the pastor's message, but after a few days, I began to hear it. The pastor's message was powerful. Then someone gave a testimony. The testimony was about the Apostle Paul's confession. No, I beat my body and make it a slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. I thought, wow, this verse is amazing. 
Because making your body your slave means putting your life on the line. And I couldn't believe it. There was something worth giving up your life for. I realized that to give up your life for something, you had to be really sure of it. After this, I was overwhelmed with the hope of becoming a new person. Then one day, the pastor said in his message, If the resurrection really happened, God exists for sure. Do you believe this? You weren't even born 2,000 years ago, but can you believe that you died on the cross with Jesus? The Almighty God came and went from this earth. Do you believe He not only overcame death, but all problems? If resurrection was real, then the Bible was true and the problem of death was solved. At first, I wanted to know if the resurrection really happened, so I researched many books. Out of the numerous records, there is no historical evidence to back up arguments against the resurrection. There were only jeering opinions of people saying that it was impossible. Therefore, the fact that God had accomplished a resurrection in human history, as prophesied, was unshakable. I came to know that Jesus was God through his resurrection 2,000 years ago. Through the resurrection, which was accomplished as it was written in the Bible, I saw that the Bible was God's promise. The risen Jesus was God. Amen. Jesus said this to me in my heart. Kyungbok, who is your Lord? I am the Lord of your life, possessions, and time, even your joys and sufferings. I'm the Lord of everything. When I realized who Jesus was, I wept and prayed before him. You're right. Jesus, you're the Lord of my life, possessions, times, my joy, and my sufferings over everything. Jesus, I lived without knowing you. I thought my body was mine, and I tried to get rid of my eyes. I lived however I wanted and shocked people. I'm sorry. I now recognize who my true Lord is by the resurrection. In this way, I accept Jesus as my Lord. The Almighty God had died for me. Then truly, the Lord of my body and life, the Lord of everything, was Jesus. Amen. Since the risen Jesus was my Lord, social anxiety was not a problem for me anymore. I had nothing to be afraid of. It was because the Almighty God was in my heart. Since everything of Jesus was mine, I could live together with him. My heart boiled with passion at the thought of this. Afterwards, my attitude towards people changed. Before, I'd avoid people's eyes in any meeting I had to attend. Now, I do not fear people. Rather, I'd approach people and talk to them first. That's because I need to know about the person so I can pray for them. My friends and family were surprised and told me that I had changed a lot. Before, if I had to eat with people, I wouldn't eat at all, or I'd eat quickly under a minute, then flee the place. But now, I always eat with others at a leisurely pace, enjoying the meals as we converse about our lives. Also, I can ride the bus without any stress. In a crowded lecture room during class, I don't stare at the desk. I naturally look straight ahead. Also, to cope with stress, I don't need to bite on stones anymore. It is because the risen Jesus is my Lord. Amen. God hasn't only given me the gospel of the resurrection, but also a task more precious than my own life. I used to be trapped in my thoughts like, why does the world work like this? And why do I have to live like this? I used to be frustrated and uneasy, but now I always think joyfully. How is this person feeling? God, give me one word of the gospel which can really refresh this person's heart. Holy Spirit, please work in me. After I pray like this, I go and talk to them. My best memory of sharing the gospel was on the subway. At first, I was afraid, but I went with other church friends and we prayed for each other. We spoke about the risen Jesus in front of everyone on the subway, like this. Hello everyone! As you know, none of us can see God. So, 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for our sins and was raised from the dead, giving us proof which everyone can believe. He made it possible for us to believe all of the Bible. 
the Almighty God, came and went from this earth. I wasn't someone who could speak in front of people, but God enabled me to boldly proclaim the resurrection. I was held captive by social anxiety for 20 years, but now I've become a witness of the resurrection by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The terrible feeling that people were staring or gossiping about me didn't matter anymore because the faith in the resurrection completely surpassed it. Amen. Like it says in Acts 17.31, Since I testified to the proof of the resurrection, which everyone can believe, I got great confidence and joy. After I share the gospel, I thank God. Being transformed like this by God's grace was possible because the church community served me with love and patience. Filled with all kinds of thoughts, I had been intensely wary of them, but they served me with their wholehearted personal devotion and prayed for me with tears. The more I think of it, the more I'm thankful. Now, I am heading towards the same goal as they are, the internal place in heaven, the throne of Jesus at the right hand of God. Amen. I made this decision before the Lord. Jesus, as you died and rose again from the dead because you loved me, I too will love these brothers and sisters with all my life. I worship you forever, my risen Jesus, who rescued me from a life totally buried in fear. I love you, Jesus, who loved me enough to die for me. Thank you. <laughs>